today we are going to quickly summarize two important aspects of developmental biology in case of human like spermatogenesis and oogenesis so first let's learn something about spermatogenesis some aspects related to spermatogenesis during formation of the embryo the primordial germ cells migrate into the testis and become immature germ cells called spermatogonia which lie in two or three layers of the inner surfaces of seminiferous tubules the cross section of a tubule is shown so not here you need to search for that so during formation of the embryo the primordial germ cells primordial germ cells migrate into the testis and become immature germ cells called spermatogonia which lie in two or three layers of the inner surfaces of the seminiferous tubule at puberty the spermatogonia begin to undergo mitotic division and continually proliferate and differentiate through definite stages of development to form sperm so steps of spermatogenesis spermatogenesis occurs in the seminiferous tubules during heterosexual life as a result of stimulation by anterior pituitary gonadotropic hormones so spermatogenesis begins at an average age of 13 years and continues throughout most of the main remainder of life but decreases markedly in old age so in the first stage of spermatogenesis the spermatogonia migrate among along sertoli cells toward the central lumen of the seminiferous tubule the sertoli cells are large with overflowing cytoplasmic envelopes that surround the developing spermatogonia all the way to the central lumen of the tubule what is that sertoli cells toward the central lumen of the seminiferous tubule the sertoli cells are large with overflowing cytoplasmic envelopes that surround the developing spermatogonia all the way to the central lumen of the tubule then meiosis spermatogonia that cross the barrier into the sertoli cell layer become progressively modified and enlarged to form large primary spermatocytes each of these primary spermatocytes in turn undergoes meiotic division to form two secondary spermatocytes after another few days the secondary spermatocytes also divide to form spermatids that are eventually modified to become spermatozoa or sperms so during the change from spermatocyte stage to the spermatid stage the 46 chromosomes 23 pairs of chromosomes of the spermatocyte are divided and this 23 chromosomes go to one spermatid and the other 23 go to the second spermatid so during the change from spermatocyte stage to the spermatid stage 46 chromosomes are there we know that and 23 pairs of chromosomes which are present in the spermatocyte and they undergo division so after that 23 chromosomes go to one spermatid and the other 23 go to the second spermatid the chromosomal genes are also divided so that only one half of the genetic characteristics of eventual fetus are provided by the father and the other half being derived from the oocyte of the mother so the entire period of spermatogenesis from spermatogonia to spermatozoa takes about 74 days in each spermatogonia one of the 23 pairs of chromosomes carries the genetic information that determines the sex of each eventual offspring the pair is composed of one x chromosome which is called female chromosome and one y chromosome the male chromosome during meiotic division the male y chromosome goes to one spermatid that then becomes an adult a male sperm and the female x chromosome goes to another spermatid that becomes a female sperm the sex of the eventual offspring is determined by which of these two types of sperm fertilizes in ova so fertilization is discussed later we will be learning that later so formation of sperm when the spermatids are first formed they still have the usual characteristics of epithelioid cells but soon they begin to differentiate and elongate into spermatozoa or spermiogenesis will be taking place so 
so each spermatozoon is composed of a head and a tail the head comprises the condensed nucleus of the cell with only a thin cytoplasmic and cell membrane layer around its surface on the outside of the anterior two thirds of the head is a thick cap called the acrosome that is formed mainly from the golgi apparatus the acrosome contains several enzymes similar to those found in lysosomes of the typical cell including hyaluronidase hyaluronidase which can digest proteoglycan filaments of tissues and powerful proteolytic enzymes which can digest proteins these enzymes play important roles in allowing the sperm to enter the ova and fertilize it then some other aspects related to this the tail of the sperm called the flagellum has three major components a central skeleton constructed of 11 microtubulin collectively called the acronym the structure of the acronym is similar to that of cilia found on the surface of other types of cells a thin cell membrane covering the acro axonem i'm sorry axonem and the a collection of mitochondria surrounding the axonem in the proximal portion of the tail it's called as the body of the tail and back and forth movement of the tail flagella movement provides motility for the sperm this movement results from a rhythmic longitudinal sliding motion between the anterior and posterior tubules that make up the axonem the energy for this process is supplied in the form of adenosine triphosphate which is synthesized by the mitochondria in the body of the tail the normal sperm move in fluid medium at a velocity of 1 Four mm per minute, which allows them to move through the female genital tract in quest of the ovum. So, hormonal factors that stimulate spermatogenesis. The role of hormones in reproduction is discussed later. So, for now, let us note that several hormones play essential roles in spermatogenesis. Some of these roles are as follows: testosterone secreted by the lydic cells located in the interstitium of the testis are essential for growth and division of the testicular germinal cells it is the first stage in forming sperm then luteinizing hormone secreted by the anterior pituitary gland stimulates lydic cell to secrete testosterone then follicular stimulating hormone also secreted by the anterior pituitary gland stimulate the sertoli cells without the stimulation the conversion of spermatids to sperm the process of spermiogenesis will not occur and estrogen is formed from testosterone by the sertoli cells when they are stimulated by follicular stimulating hormone are probably also essential for spermiogenesis then growth hormone as well as most of the other body hormones is necessary for controlling background metabolic functions of the testis so growth hormone specifically promote early division of the spermatogonia themselves in its absence as in pituitary dwarfs so spermatogenesis is severely deficit or absent this causing infertility then maturation of sperm in the epididymis after formation of the seminiferous tubules the sperms require several days to pass through the 6 meter long tubule of the epididymis sperms removed from the seminiferous tubules and from the early portions of the epididymis are non motile and cannot fertilize the ova however after the sperm have been in epididymis for 18 to 24 hours they develop the capability of motility even through even through even though several inhibitory proteins in the epididymal fluid still prevent final motility and the laughter ejaculation then so we need try to learn about this process cell divisions during spermatogenesis during embryonic development the primordial germ cells migrate to the testis where they become spermatogonia so at puberty around usually 12 to 14 years after birth spermatogonia proliferate rapidly by mitosis some begin my- meiosis to become primary spermatocytes and continue through meiotic division 1 to become secondary spermatocytes after completion of meiotic division 2 the secondary spermatocytes become spermatids and after that which differentiate to form spermatozoa so 
primordial germ cell is there endostastis after that spermatogonia is formed late spermatogonia proliferate by mitotic cell division inside testis then primary spermatocyte is formed then secondary spermatocytes are also formed then spermatids are there which are sperm is formed when you try to learn about the structure of human spermatozoon you could see portions called head tail head region contain acrosome surface membranes are there vacuole is there anterior head cap we can see then posterior head cap is there neck region body mitochondria and some microtubules are also there which are the major portions acrosome surface membrane anterior head cap posterior head cap vacuole neck body mitochondria and microtubules so we just had a quick recap about this process now we are going to learn about oogenesis so first a developing egg that is oocyte differentiates into a mature egg or ovum through a series of steps called oogenesis so during early embryonic development primordial germ cells from the dorsal endoderm of the yolk sac migrate along the mesentery of the hind gut to the outer surface of the ovary which is covered by a germinal epithelium derived embryologically from the epithelium of the genital rid germinal ridges i'm sorry germinal ridges so during this migration the germ cells divide repeatedly once these primordial germ cells reach the germinal epithelium they migrate into the substance of the ovarian cortex and become oogonia or primordial ova each primordial ovum then collects around it a layer of spindle cells from the ovarian stroma the supporting tissue of the ovary and causes them to take on epithelioid characteristics these epithelioid like cells are then called granulosa cells the ovum surrounded by a single layer of granulosa cells is called a primordial follicle at this stage the ovum is still immature and is called a primary oocyte requiring two more cell divisions before it can be fertilized by a sperm the oogonia in the embryonic ovary complete mitotic replication and the first stage of meiosis by the fifth month of fetal development the germ cell mitosis then ceases and no additional oocytes are formed at birth the ovary contains about 1 to 2 million primary oocytes then the first meiotic division of the oocyte occurs after puberty each oocyte divides into two cells a large ovum secondary oocyte and a small first polar body each of the cells contains 23 duplicated chromosomes the first polar body may or may not undergo a second meiotic division and then disintegrates the ovum undergoes a second meiotic division and after the sister chromatids separate there is a pause in meiosis if the ovum is fertilized the final step in meiosis occurs and the sister chromatids and the ovum go to separate cells and the ovary release the ovum ovulation and if the ovum is fertilized the final meiosis occurs half of the sister chromatids remain in the fertilized ovum and other half are released in a second polar body which then disintegrates so at puberty only about 300000 oocytes remain in the ovaries and only a small percentage of these oocytes become mature the many thousands of oocytes that do not mature degenerate they regenerate then during all the reproductive years of adult life between 13 to 46 years of age only 400 to 500 of the primordial follicle develop through in a develop enough to expel their ova one each month the remainder generate degenerate i guess so that means become atrophic at the end of atrophy will be there so at the end of reproductive capability at menopause only a few primordial follicles remain in the ovaries and even these follicles degenerate soon thereafter then we try to learn about the process as a whole oogenesis and follicle development oogenesis before birth repeated cell divisions are there primordial germ cell divisions and migrate to ovarian cortex then oogonium is formed then primary oocyte arrested in prophase 1 at birth you could see 1 to 2 million oocytes late each month from puberty to menopause meiosis 
will be taking place. First polar body degenerates, secondary oocyte arrested in metaphase 2 produced an ovulated second oocyte ovulation and if that got fertilized then meiosis 2 completed only if fertilized and second polar body degenerates ovum is produced. So follicle development in ovary granulosa cells primordial follicle primary follicle Pre-ovulatory mature follicle, then corpus luteum is also formed. So we just completed a quick summary. Now we need to detail in detail study is needed. So we need to learn this two processes in detail. So first we are gonna start with spermatogenesis. I will be slowly reading the topic. Very slowly we are gonna start reading. So, spermatogenesis is the production of sperm from the primordial germ cells we just mentioned. So, once the vertebrate primordial germ cells arrive at the genital ridge of male embryos, they become incorporated into the sex coats. They remain there until maturity, at which time the sex coats hollow out to form the seminiferous tubules and the epithelium of the tubules differentiates into the Sertoli cells. During his lifetime, a human male can produce 10 raised to 12 to 10 raised to 13 gametes. The spermatogenetic cells are bound to the Sertoli cells by n catherine molecules on their respective cell surfaces and by galactosyl transferase molecules on the spermatogenic cells that bind a receptor on the Sertoli cells. So, n catherine molecules and Galactosyl transferase molecules and the spermatogenetic cells that bind a receptor on the Sertoli cells. And the Sertoli cells nourish and protect the developing sperm cells and spermatogenesis, the developmental pathway from spermatogonial stem cell to mature stem sperm occur in the recess of the Sertoli cells. Then the process by which the PGC, PGC is nothing else but sorry for the delay primordial gem cells nothing else primordial gem cells derived from type a spermatogonia these cells are smaller than the pgc's and are characterized by an ovoid nucleus that contains chromatin associated with the nuclear membrane. The even spermatogonia are found adjacent to the outer basement membrane of the sex coats. At maturity, the spermatogonia are thought to divide to as make another type A1 spermatogonium as well as a second paler type of cell the type A2 spermatogonium. Thus, each type A1 spermatogonium is a stem cell capable of regenerating itself as well as producing a new cell type. The A2 spermatogonia divide to produce an A3 spermatogonia which then budget the type A4 spermatogonia. It is possible that each of the type A spermatogonia are stem cells capable of self-renewal the A4 spermatogonium has three options. It can form another A4 spermatogonium in the process known as in this context self-renewal. It can undergo cell death apoptosis or it can differentiate into the first committed stem cell, the intermediate spermatogonium. So intermediate spermatogonia are committed to become spermatozoa and then mitotically divide once to form the type B spermatogonia. These cells are the precursors to the spermatocytes and are the last cells that undergo mitosis. And these cells divide once to generate a primary spermatocytes, the cells that enter meiosis. It is not known what causes the spermatogonia to take the path towards differentiation rather than self-renewal nor it is known what stimulates the cells to enter meiotic rather than mitotic division. And we find that during spermatogonial divisions, cytokinesis is not complete. 
Pathoid cells form a syncytium whereby each cell communicates to the other via cytoplasmic bridges about 1 mu m in diameter. The successive divisions produce clones of interconnected cells and because ions and molecules rapidly pass through these intras intercellular bridges, each cohort mature synchronously. Then each primary spermatocyte undergoes the first meiotic division to yield a pair of secondary spermatocytes which complete which complete the second division of meiosis. The haploid cells formed are called spermatids and they are still connected to each other through their cytoplasmic bridges. The spermatids that are connected in this manner have haploid nuclei but are functionally diploid. Since the gene products made in one cell can readily diffuse into the cytoplasm of its neighbors. During the divisions from type A1 spermatogonium to spermatid, the cells move further and further away from the basement membrane of the seminiferous tubule and closer to its lumen. So this each type of cell can be found in the particular layer of the tubule. The spermatids are located at the border of lumen and here we lose their cytoplasmic connections and differentiate into sperm cells. In humans, the progression from spermatogenic Genile stem cells to mature sperm takes 65 days. Then spermiogenesis. The haploid spermatid is a round unflagellated cell that looks nothing like a mature vertebrate sperm. The next step in sperm maturation then is spermiogenesis or spermatelosis. The differentiation of the sperm cell for fertilization to occur, the sperm has to meet and bind with egg. And spermiogenesis differentiates the sperm from these functions of motility and interaction. The process of mammalian sperm differentiation can be seen. The first steps involve the construction of the acrosomal vesicle from the Golgi apparatus. The acrosome forms a cap that covers the sperm nucleus. As the cap is formed, the nucleus rotates so that the acrosomal cap will then be facing the basal membrane of the seminiferous tubule. This rotation is necessary. Why? Because the flagellum is beginning to form from the centriole on the other side of nucleus and this flagellum will extend into the lumen. So during the last stage of spermiogenesis, the nucleus flattens and condenses the remaining cytoplasm. The cytoplasmic droplet is jettisoned and the mitochondria form a ring around the base of the flagellum. The resulting sperm then enter the lumen of the tubule. In the mouse, the entire development from stem cells to spermatozoan takes 34.5 days. The spermatogonal stages last 8 days, meiosis lasts 13 days and spermiogenesis takes up another 13.5 days. In humans, spermatic development takes nearly twice as long as to as long to complete. Because the type A1 spermatogonia are stem cells, spermatogenesis can occur continuously. Each day, some 100 million sperms are made in each human testicle and each ejaculation release 200 million sperm. Unused sperm are either reabsorbed or passed out of the body in urine. Then, gene expression during sperm development. That's an extra topic. But still, we are going to learn that, learn that topic. So gene expression before male meiosis. Gene expression in the sperm is stage specific. And even the haploid cells are able to synthesize certain products. The initiation of spermatogenesis during puberty is probably regulated by the synthesis of BMP8B by the spermatogonia. When BMP8B reaches a critical concentration. The spermatogonia can differentiate into round spermatids. The cells produce high levels of PMP8B which can then further stimulate the spermatogonia to differentiate. So mice lacking PMP8-3 do not initiate spermatogenesis at puberty. So in humans the DAZ gene located on the long arm of the Y chromosome is deleted in many infertile men, many of whom make no sperm at all. DAZ region is very important. 
so the dazg gene is expressed exclusively in male germ cells especially in the spermatogonium and it appears to encode an dna binding protein so it's homologous to drosophila genes r b 97d and both which also encode RNA binding proteins and which are both essential for spermatogenesis. So, spermatogonia degenerate in male flies deficient while the in deficient in RB 97D. While the germ cells of male flies lacking the bowel gene do not enter meiosis. And RNA binding proteins are critical in spermatogenesis. Genesis because many of the genes expressed in the sperm are regulated at the level of translation. Indeed, in some animals such as much of spermatogenesis occurs without any new gene transcription. The synthesis of protamine, the basic protein that replaces histones in the diploid, haploid sperm nucleus is regulated by the phosphorylation of an 18k kilodalton binding protein that recognizes the 3 dash untranslated region of the mouse protamine message. In Drosophila, the Rolex gene transcribed by pre-meiotic Drosophila spermatogonia controls the numbers of meiotic divisions. Males lacking functional copies of Rolex gene undergo Rohex gene undergo an extra meiotic menopause metaphase. In I'm sorry, metaphase. In addition to the two normal ones, increasing the concentration of Rohex results in the failure of a failure to execute meiotic meiosis 2 then gene expression during male meiosis much of gene transcription during spermatogenesis take place during the diplotene stage of meiotic prophys the genes that are transcribed specifically during spermatogenesis are often those whose products are necessary for sperm motility or binding to the egg in Drosophila melanogaster, one of the sperm specific genes transcribed is for beta 2 tubulin. This in form of beta tubulin is seen only during spermatogenesis and it is responsible for forming the meiotic spindles, the axonym and the macrotubules, microtubules associated with the lengthening of mitochondria. So Hoyle and Raff in 1990 have shown that Another beta tubulin isophone, beta 3 tubulin, which is normally expressed in mesodermal cells and epidermis, cannot substitute for the beta 2 tubulin. When they fused the beta, uh, I'm sorry, 5 prime regulatory region of the beta 2 tubulin gene to the coding sequence of the beta 2 tubulin gene, the beta 3 tubulin gene was able to be expressed in the developing sperm. When this gene was expressed in the absence of beta 2 tubulin gene, the resulting sperm cells failed to undergo meiosis, axonym assembly or nuclear shaping. Only the mitochondrial elongation occurred. This indicates that the formation of the meiotic spindles and axonym of sperm cells cannot be accomplished by just any beta tubulin and that the transcription of gene i'm sorry sperm specific isoforms is important so those genes whose products are necessary for the binding of the sperm and the extracellular matrices of the egg are also transcribed during spermatogenesis the genes for urgin binded is transcribed relatively late in spermatogenesis and its mRNA is translated into bindin shortly after being made. The bindin accumulates in vesicles that fuse together to form the single acrosomal vesicle of the mature sea urchin sperm. And this indicates localization of the bindin protein in the acrosomal vesicle of sperm while it is still in the testis. So some other aspects related to this like haploid gene expression in spermatocytes paternal effect genes and terminating gene expression and next major portion that is oogenesis oogenic meiosis some other aspects related to the maturation of the oocyte and amphibians etc will be dealt with the help of next video so thank you for listening i guess so we just learned some aspects related to the spermatogenesis in human 
in particular so we mentioned some points we mentioned about spermiogenesis and gene expression during sperm development thank you for listening